Hello everyone. In this video, I will tell you about tooth formation. So let's first see the different stages of tooth formation. The tooth formation can be classified into either morphologic or functional stages. And the morphologic stages are based on shape of enamel organ and they include bud stage, cap stage and bell stage. The functional stages include initiation, histodifferentiation, morphodifferentiation and apposition. The tooth formation begins with the primary epithelial band formation and the primary epithelial band starts to form at around 11th day of intrauterine life and it would complete at around 37th day of intrauterine life. The primary epithelial band forms by the epithelial cells proliferating in the horizontal plane and once the primary epithelial band is established, the plane of mitosis would change from horizontal to vertical and this vertical mitosis would now lead to formation of the dental lamina on the lingual side and vestibular lamina on the buccal side. Now as you can see here in this animation, the epithelial band which is brown in color proliferates into a lingual dental lamina which is pink in color and a buccal vestibular lamina which is yellow in color. And once the dental lamina is established by the 8th week of intrauterine life, the rate of mitosis would increase at localized places in this dental lamina and these would correspond to the 20 primary teeth. Now this results in bud formation and the bud formation marks the beginning of the tooth formation or in other words initiation of tooth formation. Now let's go to the bud stage. The bud stage as I have already said establishes by the increased proliferation in the dental lamina and in the enamel organ there is no histodifferentiation. What it means is that all the cells in the enamel organ at the bud stage appear same. But when you compare these cells with the cells of dental lamina, the tooth bud cells have high RNA content, they have a low glycogen content and they would show increased oxidative enzyme activity. Also in the bud stage, there is no dental papilla and there is no dental follicle. But by the end of the bud stage, the primary enamel knot would appear and this primary enamel knot would express factors like FGF, BMP and SLIT. The primary enamel knot is responsible for the inhibition of mitosis and this inhibition of mitosis would result in the formation of a depression in the developing tooth germ which marks the transition from the bud to the cap stage. Now let's see the cap stage. The cap stage is marked by the beginning of morphodifferentiation as the shape of the enamel organ changes from the bud to the cap shape. Also, it shows beginning of histodifferentiation as different cells like outer enamel epithelium, inner enamel epithelium and stellate reticulum appear in the cap stage. Also, certain temporary structures like enamel knot, enamel cord and enamel niche can also be appreciated in the cap stage. So, let's first discuss these temporary structures. The first temporary structure would be enamel knot. The enamel knot inhibits mitosis and that's why it is known as the cuspal organizational center. It expresses factors like FGF, BMP, SLIT, SHH and WNT. The next temporary structure is enamel cord. The enamel cord is a strand of epithelial cells that extends from the stratum intermedium into the stellate reticulum towards the outer enamel epithelium and these cells have elongated nuclei and this feature would help you in differentiating these cells from the stellate reticulum cells. Now it is proposed that these cells, the enamel cord cells, they help in the transition of cap to bell stage and also it is said that they might be a source of stellate reticulum cells. The enamel cord may sometimes be called enamel septum when the enamel cord reaches the outer enamel epithelium and divides the enamel organ into two parts. The point where it attaches at the outer enamel epithelium shows a depression and this depression is called enamel navel. The next temporary structure is enamel niche. The enamel niche represents a defect in the lateral lamina. Now what is lateral lamina? The lateral lamina is the attachment between the dental lamina and the developing enamel organ. Now because of this enamel niche, it appears that the tooth germ has double attachment with the dental lamina. And this enamel niche appears like a funnel shaped depression which contains a connective tissue 
and it probably has no functional significance and if at all there is a function to it, it is unknown as yet. As the proliferation of the epithelial cell continues, the cap stage transitions into the bell stage. But the morphodifferentiation and histodifferentiation still keep on continuing into the bell stage and this leads to the formation of stratum intermedium. Now the bell stage can be discussed in early and late bell stages. So let's first talk about the early bell stage. The early bell stage of the earliest forming primary tooth would appear at about 14th week of intrauterine life and you would notice differential mitosis along the inner enamel epithelium. It means that there would be inhibition of mitosis in the region of enamel knot that is in the region of cusps but everywhere else the mitosis is still going on. And as I have said the stratum intermedium has appeared in the early bell stage also the later lamina disintegrates in this stage. Now let's see the different cells that are present in the bell stage. The first one is inner enamel epithelium. These cells are columnar in shape and they are rich in RNA though they lack uh, alkaline phosphatase and bicarbonate and both of these are essential for apposition. They are separated from the dental papilla by a basement membrane which is about 1 to 2 microns thick and these are the cells that would differentiate to form ameloblasts. The next cell is external enamel epithelium or outer enamel epithelium. These cells are cuboidal in shape and same as inner enamel epithelium, the basement membrane here is 1 to 2 microns thick. They have a large central nuclei and they have only a few secretory organelles so there is not much protein production here. They are said to maintain the shape of the enamel organ and they also regulate the permeability of the enamel organ. The next cell is the stellate reticulum. The stellate reticulum cells are fully developed by the early bell stage. Uh, though they have appeared in the cap stage, they produce and they secrete glycosaminoglycans into the intercellular space and they are star shaped with a prominent nuclei. They have alkaline phosphatase, they have RNA and glycogen content. Now remember here that though they are epithelial cell, they still show some mesenchymal function which is to secrete collagen type 1, 2 and 3. Their main function is to protect inner enamel epithelial cells and they also aid in maintenance of the shape of enamel organ. The intercellular hydrostatic pressure of stellate reticulum is said to equal that of dental papilla and it is for this reason that the proliferation pattern of inner enamel epithelium solely determines the crown pattern and these cells also secrete factors like MCSF that is macrophage colony stimulating factor, TGF beta 1 that is transformation growth factor beta 1 and PTHRP that is parathyroid hormone related protein and all these three factors are osteoclastic that is they would recruit osteoclasts and would cause bone lysis. Now these factors are secreted coronal to the developing tooth which aids in the tooth eruption. The next cell is stratum intermedium. The stratum intermedium cells are flattened cells which are arranged in two to three layers. They have more alkaline phosphatase and they also contain bicarbonate and due to this they participate in the enamel formation along with the ameloblasts and combined with the ameloblast they are known as single secretory unit. Next I will tell you about dental follicle. The dental follicle or the dental sac is present between the enamel organ and the bony crypt. It surrounds the enamel organ like a sac and that's why it is known as dental sac. So this can be distinguished into three layers that is inner layer, outer layer and a middle layer. The inner layer is vascular and it is fibrocellular and it is 3 to 4 cell thick and these cells are derived from neural crest. The outer cell layer is vascular and is mesenchymal layer whereas the middle layer is loose connective tissue layer. So it is the middle layer which is least vascular of all the three layers. Next let me tell you about the innervation of the developing tooth. The nerve fibers form a plexus below the dental papilla in cap stage but they enter the dental papilla only after the first layer of dentin is formed that is after the beginning of dentinogenesis in the late bell stage. So though they approach in the cap stage they only enter in the late bell stage. The nerve fibers that are associated with blood vessels are autonomic and the nerve fibers that are free in papilla are sensory and the innervation does not develop immediately. By the time a child is born it is as yet rudimentary but it becomes mature once the tooth erupts into the oral cavity. Next let me tell you about 
blood supply. The small blood vessels invade dental papilla in cap stage and their number increases from there on till it reaches maximum in the bell stage. The enamel organ though remains avascular. Now during the transition of early bell to the late bell, secondary enamel knots appear and their number would correspond to the number of cusps that are present in a tooth. Say for example, it's a premolar, then in a premolar two secondary enamel knots would appear and if it's a four cusp molar, then four secondary enamel knots would form. And this results in the establishment of the future shape of the tooth in the inner enamel epithelium and the basement membrane. Now this diagram shows the various cells that are present in the late bell stage and you can also see the secondary enamel knot here. The late bell stage in the first forming primary tooth appears at about 18th week of intrauterine life. By this time, the lateral lamina is absent and the apposition that is the formation of heart tissue will be seen in this stage. The lingual lamina or the successional lamina or in other words, the permanent tooth bud would be seen in this stage. The first permanent tooth bud forms at an age of around 5 months of intrauterine life or at 18 weeks of intrauterine life. The distal lamina which is responsible for permanent molars also forms during this stage and the secondary enamel knots corresponding to the number of cusps are also seen in this stage. The basement membrane supporting the inner enamel epithelium now represents the shape of the tooth and is called membrana preformativa. So you can say that it is the membrana preformativa that ultimately decides the shape of the tooth. That's it for now friends. Remaining of the tooth formation that is uh, apposition, root formation, ectomesenchymal and mesenchymal interaction and genetic regulation would be covered in subsequent videos. I hope you like this video and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.